When we decide to create our image basing on components on render passes that we will combine together ourselves, we should use a little bit different approach to materials, lighting, environment, world, and render settings. If we use a standard approach, meaning we want to get the best possible combined pass, we hit F12, we take a look at it and try to judge if it's close enough to the final result that we want to achieve. But that's not the approach that we will be using in our workflow. We shouldn't at all take care about how the combined pass looks like. We should focus on the quality of all of the components that we need. I purposely use the word quality instead of the look because in many cases the image that looks a lot worse than it should can have more valuable information inside that we can use when combining it with other components. Okay, so let's first take a look at the shaders. Here we have the diffuse panel and we set the color of the material. We set it here or we apply some texture that will define the color of the material. There are different kinds of diffuse shaders and let's be honest, in most of the cases we will only use the Lambert or Oren Nayer. Fresnel shader model can be rather easily faked in compositing, so in most cases when I want to get the result that this diffuse shader model gives me, I use one of those two and fake it in compositing. There are situations when we want to use this one or this one, but they may cause some problems when compositing. So we simply need to be aware of this. Okay, we chose the model of the shader, we chose the color, and here is the parameter intensity. I mentioned before that I think that this parameter shouldn't exist at all, and we always should use the intensity of one. This intensity parameter makes our color brighter or darker. We could move this value, this slider to the left to make our material darker, but exactly the same result can be achieved when we use the intensity of one and simply darken the color. It's exactly the same. So it's simply better to leave it at one and change the color itself. The issue with this intensity parameter is that it's not burnt into the color pass. It is burnt into the diffuse. No matter if we are talking about the colored diffuse that Blender gives us or the clean diffuse that we will be creating ourselves. This parameter is taken into account when calculating the environment lighting or indirect lighting or if we decide to use add blending mode for ambient occlusion. It is calculated when creating the combined pass, but the ambient occlusion pass, environment lighting pass or indirect lighting pass don't have this information burned inside. They are calculated as if the intensity was set to 1. So then, when we combine those passes into our final composite, we have to take it into account. If you watched my tutorial available for free on cgcookie.com, I mean this one, Introduction to Compositing in Blender Round 3. It was released in February 2012. You remember that I showed you how to composite the environment lighting and indirect lighting. I needed to multiply it by the intensity. If the intensity of all of the materials in my scene is the same, I can simply use the color that has the value of the intensity. But if I have differences in intensities, I had to create a separate map of intensities. This is just a waste of time. So it's much easier to set the intensities of all of the materials to one and control the lightness of the colors in the color settings. Okay, but we may very easily make a simple mistake. The intensity parameter is by default set to 0.8 when we add a new material. Let's imagine a very complicated scene where we have tens or hundreds of materials. Many of us don't touch this parameter. So we have 200 materials and all of them have the intensity of 0.8. Is there an easy way to change all of the materials intensities to 1 without having to go through them one by one? Yes, there is and we can use a little bit of Python to it. I will show you a simple script that can do it. So let's open the text editor and add a new text and few simple lines of code that we don't even have to understand can do it for us. Every script should start with the sentence import bpy. This means that we import the Blender Python. Then let's define one variable, let's call it materials, and we will say materials equal 
bpy.data.materials. Then we will tell the script to set the intensity parameter for all of the materials to 1. So we will say for material in materials colon material diffuse underscore intensity equals 1.0. And that's it. And we can run this script and for all of the materials in our scene the intensity has been set to 1. Now a word about the color itself. As a rule of thumb we should avoid colors that have any of the three channels set to 0. When we set everything else properly it shouldn't cause any problems. But there are situations when it will. The green channel of this material is set to 0. Let's take a look at the shadow bus. The shadows should be the shades of grey. But here, as we can see, we have some color in the shadow pass. If we set the color so that this green channel is not zero, but some very, very low value, almost not visible, we would avoid this behavior. Sometimes it's not that easy to control the color because it can be defined by the texture and it's not always possible to change the texture colors so that none of the colors of the texture has any values set to zero. But I would suggest that any time we can control it, let's simply not leave any channel's value to zero. Now let's go down a little bit and I would suggest not to touch the emit value. Leave it to zero any time you can. Translucency. I would suggest not to touch it. I would suggest to treat this parameter as if it didn't exist at all. Transparency. We shouldn't enable transparency at all. We should take care about the transparency in compositing and always set the alpha to 1. Mirror, reflections. Here I have the reflectivity set to 0 0.6. That's the result that I wanted to achieve. But it's better to set it to 1 and then in compositing control the power of reflectivity. Fresnel. Sometimes we want the Fresnel behavior but it's better not to touch it here. It's better to use the default settings because this behavior can be easily controlled in compositing. Subsurface scattering. This is a nightmare. If we can avoid it, let's avoid it. Let's go down to shadow. Here we can use the standard approach, but when we set the shadows in the lamps settings, we should never ever use any other color of the shadow than black. And this, in fact, has nothing to do with compositing. We should never use any other colors of the shadow. I will come back to it a little bit later in the episode about ambient light and environment light. By the way, if I didn't use the dark gray color for the shadow, I wouldn't have this issue with the shadow pass on this object, even though the green channel of it is set to zero. So two ways of avoiding something like this. One, avoid zeros in any channel in the color settings, and the other, that will solve many other issues, don't use colored shadows. Now the colors of the lamps. Sometimes we would want to use the lamps that have some colors. Like we would want the main light to have some yellowish tint. We would want to use another lamp that will be the fill light and give it a little bit of the blue color. But even if this is our intention, even if we want the lights to have the colors, we should always set the color of the lamp to white, pure white, 100% for each channel. If we set the render layers and render passes properly, we will be able to control the colors of those lamps in compositing. It's much easier to change the color from white to anything else than, for example, from this to this. When we are thinking about all of those settings that I showed you, we should try to set everything such that it can be changed afterwards. If we set the reflectivity of the material to something else than one, it becomes impossible to control it in compositing. If we set any transparency here in materials, we also make our lives a lot more difficult in compositing. And the same applies to lights. If we set the colors here, we will not be able to change our minds in compositing. It's like with cooking. If we add the salt to our soup, we will not be able to take it away. The color set here is like adding a salt without tasting the soup. Now the world settings. Ambient occlusion, environment lighting, indirect lighting. Indirect lighting can be used only when the approximate gather method is used. 
So if we want to have any indirect lighting, in most cases we cannot avoid creating another scene, separate scene, just for indirect lighting. So let's forget about it at the moment. Now ambient occlusion and environment lighting. The factor that we use here will be taken into account only in the combined pass. But the ambient occlusion pass alone or environment lighting pass alone will look exactly the same no matter what factor we use here. And when we talk about the ambient occlusion, it doesn't matter if we use add or multiply blending mode, the ambient occlusion pass will look exactly the same. But of course the mode that we use here will influence the combined pass. At the beginning of this video I said that we shouldn't care at all about combined pass. Well, we shouldn't care about how it looks, but sometimes we would want to use the combined pass as one of the passes, one of the components. In this case, those settings matter. In many cases, I use the combined pass as the reflection pass. I will explain it in details in separate video about reflections. And now, if we make a decision that we will use environment lighting but won't use ambient occlusion, intuitively we would enable environment lighting and disable ambient occlusion. But I would suggest not to do so. Even if this is our intention, we should always enable ambient occlusion. If we don't want it to influence our image at all, we can exclude it from the combined pass here, or here we can set the factor of it to zero. But the ambient occlusion pass as such is very valuable. And if we decide to use environment lighting anyway, enabling the ambient occlusion pass won't increase the render time. So it costs us nothing, except some additional memory, of course. When you analyze my car scene, you will notice that I didn't use any other diffuse shader model than Lambert or Oren Nayer, and this one is used only for the car paint. Intensities of all of my materials are set to 1, if anything reflects environment, the reflectivity is set to 1. None of my materials is transparent, all of the alphas are set to 1, even for windows or covers of the lamps. All of my lamps colors are set to pure white. Shadows for all of the lamps are black. In the world settings, I have enabled environment lighting using the sky texture. And although I didn't intend to use ambient occlusion at all, I anyway enabled it. Here you see that I set the factor to 1 and blending mode to multiply, which in general is a mistake. But as I said before, it doesn't influence the ambient occlusion pass, but it only influences the combined passes. And all of my render layers are set such that ambient occlusion pass is excluded from the combined pass. So ambient occlusion doesn't influence any of my combined passes. So we can get away with the multiply blending mode and this high factor of ambient occlusion. Following the rules that I showed you is not a must. But if we keep those things in mind, we can avoid headache when compositing.